Greetings, I'm Casey Holdall, beat reporter for Trailblazers.com. He is Lamar Hurd, television analyst for the Trailblazers, and this is Doing the Right Thing Matters, presented by our friends at Les Schwab. And today we're going to look at some of the similarities and differences between Gary Trent Jr. Mm-hmm. and his father, also a former Trailblazer, Gary Trent Sr. Oh, that'd be uh, fun. Two guys who, uh, kind of similarities in the way that they present themselves, I think. Yeah, but, uh, mannerisms, pretty, pretty, right? Exactly, but, but a little bit different in terms of of some of the the skills on the court. So yeah. kind of your, your general thoughts on, on Gary Trent Sr., the player, a guy who came out of Ohio, the, the Shaq, Shaq of the Mac. Mac. Which, but, I mean, like, usually you can't have a nickname that has someone else's name in it. Unless cool you nickname. do it, right? And that, that's a cool nickname, though. It is. Like, Shaq of the Mac is, like, you, you got the alliteration, it rhymes. And, yep. I mean, like, it, it really spoke to the kind of player that Gary Trent was. You're right. You have to represent that name to the fullest. And he did that. Like, he was a bruiser. He beat people up. And uh, had that fearless attitude, yeah. would just go get it at all times. And he carried that case into the NBA. And a lot of times you will see guys in college who might have that type of game, which is more of a bruiser type of game, really physical. The skill set of dribble, pass, shoot may be not extremely high. And so then people would typically question, well, can that guy play in the league? He could because he was that dominant physically and he did have enough of a skill set where he could get it done. He didn't shoot the ball like his son out to the three-point line, but he'll pop in some mid-range here and there every once in a while and he knew his game. He was a guy that knew how to play within himself and then could guard multiple positions on the post. Back then when he was playing, it was a postman's game. Three guards or three out, two in, not one in or none in like we see nowadays today. So... um, I, I enjoyed seeing the clips of him because me too. we you know like going back and watching it it's like whoa this is a throwback player you don't see a lot of these kind of guys these days and how much of a contrast his son is absolutely where it is skill dominant his game being able to shoot it from three deep over forty percent for a lot of the year and uh, a dribbler another guy that plays within himself mm-hmm. like we watch Gary Trent Jr. he doesn't hurt the team. He's somebody who, throughout the season, has averaged either the lowest amount of turnovers per game or has been tied. He's been right down there, and he's tied with some of his teammates who play a lot fewer minutes than him. So he's out there in crunch time due to a lot of the injuries the Blazers suffered this season, playing in crunch time minutes, not turning the ball over, being highly productive, making fourth quarter. Have you seen a big three in the fourth quarter yet? That this dude has, has missed. missed? No, nah. <laughs> that's a good point. You're exactly right. He hasn't missed any. He like, had, like not the big ones. No, not the ones that you either need to tie the game or to go ahead. Or the Blazers are making like a a 10-2 run, and you need that last three to make the opponent's coach call a timeout. Like it's always Gary yeah. doing that. It's been incredible to watch. And that's that mentality too. And I, I asked Gary, a junior, I should say, uh, about what he thought some of the similarities were between him and his dad. And he was like, you know. We, we, from a skill perspective, we are pretty different. Though he did say, he's like, every move that I know, I learned from my dad. So even though Senior wasn't a guard, he had the skills where he, could, he can impart on his son how to play like a guard. And he, he said that, you know, the mentality we bring, the, that dog mentality, it, and he mentioned it as something just the Trents do, period. Not just Gary, Gary yeah. Trents, but so Trent what, family, family life, general, yeah. Being that, like, hey, like, you, don't, you take every single challenge personally and... You don't let yourself get played out there. Yeah. Like, and you do whatever it takes to make sure that people know out there that you're not a punk and that you're not going to be pushed around. And I think we've, we've seen that from Junior this season. Yeah. Uh, getting into a few situations where after the fact, people are like, hey, who's, who's yeah. Gary Trent Jr.? Yeah, you got Coming people like tweeting that. about and him and all this. Yeah. I, I guarantee that Senior saw that and said, yeah, well, the reason why he's not afraid to go at your neck is because... That's what I've been doing since, since with him since I was a kid. And Gary even mentioned that, Junior, I should say. Uh, he was like, you know, my dad was, he was hard on me at times when I was a kid, but I feel like that prepared me to be in this situation now where I know that when I'm on the court, I don't have to feel like I'm lesser than someone else or because you were selected here and I was selected in the second round, that means that you're going to do these things and I should do these things. It's like, no, I, I go out there with the mentality that that this is where I belong and this is where I'm supposed to play. And that's, he got that from from me. Yeah, and it's not fake. No. How many fake tough guys are there nowadays in a sport? now that, you know, you can't really throw. Yeah. There's plenty of fake tough guys in the league. And that ain't ain't the trends. No, none of it, not at all. Like, and, and that comes across, like, people know. And he doesn't go out of his way to try to be a tough guy, to try to impose his will. It truly is to the point of what you're saying, who he is, is how he was raised. Um... One of the things I love, I think, most about Gary 
is the dynamic he has with Anthony that reminds me so much of the dynamic between Damien and TJ, where one guy got to play first, and one guy had a lot of the hype around him, and rightfully so. Damien comes into the league, starting right away as a rookie. CJ comes in the year after, kind of has to take his time, fighting injuries and all that. And never was there an ounce of jealousy. You, you don't read out in the papers or out in the media, CJ McCollum unhappy with Damian Lillard or vice versa. And it, rather, you read that CJ's Dame's biggest fan. Dame's CJ's biggest fan. We saw the same thing with Gary and Anthony coming oh, into absolutely. this season. Yeah. A lot of the, the hype and the love was surrounding Anthony coming into the year when you look at basketball world and national media looking at Anthony Simons and how he's coming along. And again, rightfully so because of the way Anthony ended last season, the work he put in in the summer, and a lot of the stuff he showed early in the season. And Gary Trent Jr. was always his biggest fan. On the bench, high-fiving whenever he could, cheering him on. And once those two got a chance to get minutes together, you still see that same love. To me, that's a special case because that lasts. Yeah. That, that lasts you through the ups and the downs of the season. And I mean, hopefully we see those two playing together for a really long time. And I think part of that might be due to seniors' influence on juniors. Because I think when you have a parent who plays in the league, and particularly a guy who, you know, uh, Gary Trent Sr. was a good player, but more of a role player, a guy who, you know, filled a role. Yeah. Good I think those guys teach their yeah. children like, hey, it's important to be part of a team. Great point. And, well, yeah, I'm an NBA player. Like, I'm still part of a team. Yeah. And you have to go out there and support these guys, even if you wish maybe you were playing more. He's getting the minutes that you wish you had. The fact of the matter is, like, we're together. We're, we're in this together, and we have to support each other. And we should support each other because our common goal is the same. And it's not about me getting notes or me getting buckets or me getting a contract. It, you're exactly right. It's Gary Trent, a guy who went to Duke. It's a guy who felt like he probably should have got drafted higher than he did. And you have a guy, exactly, you have a guy in Anfernee who didn't end up going to college, gets drafted in the first round, and you look at that situation and you think to yourself, well, there might be some possibility of maybe a little friction, and you're, you're right, it's not, it's not fake. Like, those guys support each other, they like each other, and they're out there trying to make each other better, too. Yeah. And I, I think, again, that... Healthy competition. Exactly, that speaks to who, who Gary Trent Jr. is, but I also think it speaks to who Senior is as well. I agree.